Now, Budget 2025 also revealed that Singapore is studying the potential deployment of nuclear power and is taking steps to build up capabilities in this area. For a look at how the country can do this in a safe and cost-effective way, I'm speaking with Dr. Victor Nien, founding co-chairman of the Centre for Strategic Energy and Resources. Dr. Nien, thank you for coming in for this timely discussion. First, what needs to be in place uh, before Singapore implements nuclear power in terms of, as we mentioned, safety and, of course, a pipeline of skilled manpower? Well, thank you for having me for tonight. This is a very important question. And now we heard Prime Minister Lawrence Wong mention about in the budget that Singapore is making plans. So when it comes to Making nuclear energy safer and having cost-effective deployment, yes, we do need a pipeline of qualified scientists, engineers, and regulators. And that means universities, um, research centers like ourselves, independent think tanks, we all have a duty to start looking at, you know, what is the pathway to train people? you know, from educational point of view, from training, um, and even thinking about Singapore as a whole, maybe we also need to think about sending our qualified experts overseas for training so that we build a pipeline of scientists, engineers, regulators, and maybe even legal and insurance professionals so that we have all rounded cover of all the various aspects of nuclear energy projects. Yeah, you bring up some interesting points, but do we also have the building blocks uh, to set up this in a safe and cost-effective way? Well, I believe we do. And in fact, you know, with the esteemed research institutions and also universities in Singapore, we are in a good place to provide cost-effective training, leveraging on existing resources, and also having uh, access to international experts. We do have that cost-effective effective pathways uh, to achieve what we want to what we want to do in nuclear energy development. Uh, now is actually the time to start um, gradually materializing those plans and ambitions uh, and start looking at baby steps, what we need to do towards that long term. All right. Okay. We're, we're, we're taking baby steps, but surely uh, there would be some idea as to where the possible locations of a nuclear plant or nuclear plants in Singapore would be situated given our size and population. Yes. Well, Singapore is a highly dense urban environment. And everywhere in Singapore, uh, if you're looking at the traditional technology or the conventional nuclear power plant technology, we're all within the exclusion zones. Um, and hence, we are looking at maybe more advanced technologies like Generation 4, for example. That's what we're looking at. And even small modular reactors or SMRs, where you know it is much smaller footprint, mm. maybe they can deploy it in places, uh, for example, on uh, just hypothetically, maybe on Jurong Island or somewhere that is far in the industrial area. And because these reactors are safe enough to be deployed near the user, in, in this case, the electricity consumers, um, there might be industrial facilities in Singapore that will be able to accommodate a very small reactor mm. uh, when the technology becomes available. That's interesting because you just said that, that the footprint will be much smaller uh, uh, you know, than, than maybe some of the, the nuclear reactors that we have seen. Um, but how much energy uh, would be able to, will it be able to produce? Well, this depends on the size of the reactors. So, mm. um, of course, sometimes we compare with renewables you know, to look at you know, what 100 megawatt of solar can produce versus 100 megawatt of nuclear power plant can produce. Mm. Because nuclear power plant is, is a thermal plant, so it produces power on a continuous basis. So 100 megawatt on a continuous basis, it, it produces you know, out of 24 hours, you have that continuous supply of energy uninterrupted. So this has an advantage compared to renewables because you don't have to worry about what happens when the sun is not shining or when yeah. the wind is not blowing. Um, so on that, in that sense, uh, there is a continuous supply to make sure lights are on at night. Okay, I'm going to, to fold two questions into one. Uh, what businesses would stand to benefit uh, from these? Is it more than just data centers? And then secondly, uh, would these nuclear capabilities also um, down the road result in cheaper electricity for consumers and Singaporeans? I think the Singapore economy as a whole will benefit from the clean electricity that will be generated from nuclear power plant. And as I just mentioned, it's compared to renewable energy. Nuclear power plant is a 24 by 7 carbon-free energy source. 
And that means regardless whether the sun is shining over this evening or whether, whether the wind blows or not, there will always be 24-7 energy. So for any company, data centers, uh, manufacturing facilities, uh, our petrochemical plant, these are the companies that need clean energy the most in order to meet their climate pledge and also for help to help Singapore achieve our decarbonization goals. So that's what I'm saying, you know, collectively, the entire economy will benefit from nuclear. And in some of the global examples, this is to a second, the second part of the question. If you look yes. at some of the examples, let's say, for example, in China and Korea, um, we have seen examples that nuclear power plant can be built on budget, on time. And especially if you look at the, the project in, in the UAE, that is also an example of nuclear export projects being delivered on time, on budget. And so it is possible for nuclear power plant to produce electricity at a price that is cheaper than gas. And mm. in some cases, some might argue it is even cheaper than coal. So yes, there is a possibility in Singapore in the future, maybe nuclear power plant can help lower the electricity price, but this all depends on a number of factors, for example, labor cost you mm. know, in building the plant, you know, how advanced the technology is, how complicated it is, and also the infrastructure that may be needed to enable nuclear plant to be stationed in Singapore. So all that would determine the future cost of nuclear. Well, I really want to thank you for your insightful uh, answers, uh, Dr. Nian. I've been speaking there with Dr. Victor Nian. Uh, he is the founding co-chairman of the Centre for Strategic Energy and Resources. Thank you.